<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Hello, the students and professors, lecturers, and everybody who is joining our session today. My name is Mira. I represent Sage Publishing as a senior sales and market development executive. So I'm here with my colleague, um, uh, Dr. Kihan Lim. Kihan Lim will be able to help you to answer your questions if you have any throughout our session today. So uh, before we start, let, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, again, if I, like I said, if you have any question, uh, please use the question and answer button at the bottom of your screen. Type in your question and we will get back to you uh, during the session, which is uh, Dr. Kihan Lim will be able to assist you with that. And um, just to let you know, we are only reviewing questions on the uh, question and answer board. So please use that instead of chat box. So only use the question and answer uh, board. I hope that's clear. Uh, for anyone who used the raised hand function, if you wish to ask question, please use the question and answer button and uh, we will get alerted and you will, uh, you will have your answer as soon as possible. So I hope that's clear. If uh, again, if you have any question, please use the question and answer button at the bottom of your screen. So what's on our agenda today? Um, I'm going to walk you through a little bit um, on Sage story. I'm going to tell you uh, what are we and what we do. Uh, of course, the topic today is Sage Research Methods and Sage Campus online courses. And we will be talking about what are these platforms designed to do? Um, I'm going to demonstrate you the platform and the key features of Sage Research Methods and Sage Campus as well. And then we will move slowly and gradually to question and answer section, uh, where we will be able to speak a little bit if we want to. And then um, after our session will be done, you will have a link on your library portal uh, where you can just uh, see the set of uh, simple questions based on what we have covered today and you will be able to answer the questions and get a prize which contains uh, five uh, prizes in total and uh, allow me to just start with the story this is our founder her name is Sarah Miller and when Sarah, Sarah Miller was 24 she and her husband George McCune uh, start uh, our company with $500 in startup capital in one room uh, in New York City. And our new company was named after our founders. That's why it's called Sage. So it's Sarah and George. Then both of them moved to Southern California in 1966. And within its first decade, we had established an office in London, which then became our publishing house. And uh, we published our first journal in 1965. That's when we actually founded our company. And from now on, uh, from that period of time until now, we have over 1,000 journals and over 1 million articles available. And that's not only uh, content that we have, which I will be telling you um, shortly. So this is our office in London, as you can see, uh, it was 1971. And uh, this is how Sarah looks today. Uh, Sage is known for its commitment to the social sciences. We began, began with the Little Green Book series, an expansive research reference collection. We also have any other different content like research methods, journals, videos, texts, content empathizing, critical thinking, courses, data analysis, and a lot of tools um, available for you to use. And since 1965 until today, we are following and pursuing one mission, which is building bridges to knowledge to knowledge, supporting the development of ideas through the research process to scholarship that is certified, taught, and applied. And uh, what I would like to highlight is the fact that currently and um, SDU library, you have um, a few subscriptions to our resources, such as uh, Sage Journals, Humanities and Social Science collections, such as uh, knowledge, Sage Knowledge eBooks, hosting over 5,800 items on the platform. You also have a trial access for two months for Sage Research Methods and Sage Campus um, today, which I will be uh, talking to you about very shortly. So um, starting with Sage Research Methods, um, like the description suggests what every researcher needs. Basically, um, we developed Sage Research Methods as a library database that hosts over 6,000 items, all dedicated to developing the knowledge and skills required to conduct effective research projects for anyone involved in the research process. So 
Um, we developed this platform in 2011, uh, starting uh, with uh, a journal series. And then um, now we have a lot of in, uh, interactive tools in that platform that comes into a very easy to use and one-stop shop platform. Uh, I will be showing you the features uh, as we go. So um, you should know as a student or as a professor or lecturer that anybody face um, difficulties during the process of their research. That's because it's a very complex and daunting task and we have to acknowledge that as well. So no matter what your experience level is, we are here um, to help and to improve your knowledge on your research project. So um, like I said, and I will be repeating that a few times as we go, the content is stage research methods covers all phases of the research cycle, whether you are deciding and refining your research question or all the way through the publishing your to publishing your result or maybe even um, presenting it at a conference, for example, and everything that comes in between is covered in our platform. Uh, so uh, stage research me method methods uh, suite is really um, contains a number of components or modules and each component fulfills certain needs and helps users to overcome their challenges in the research process. So um, I did uh, a few profiles of our users of who can use our platform and like I said we cover not only all phases of the research cycle but also uh, we are giving the content to everybody involved in the research process so that includes students who may be new to research and never done one before that could be a researchers with more experience and more knowledge based on their previous uh, years of because that could be uh, students at master levels and beyond. We also have professors who are teaching research methods and not only teaching them, but also ap applying themselves in their day to day and also doing their own research as well. So what um, our platform can do to help students, of course, we can, you guys can attain better grades, you can save your time, you can reduce your frustration because I know um, research project can be a little bit overwhelming. You may feel a bit anxious about um, the whole process. And of course, with that, we help you to build confidence. So with that in mind, uh, you are probably in years one to four undergraduate degree. You probably haven't studied research courses before. And um, eventually you will need to do your research in your final year. So um, as a student myself before, I can say that not all of us were aware of what the library offers and we are not sure where to seek help. And sometimes uh, some of the students don't even know that library provides you these resources. So um, hold on a sec. Yes. And uh, students often require support throughout the whole research process. Um, we also have researchers as our users, and if you are one of them, you are probably at master level and beyond. You have chosen already to pursue a research-based pathway. Um, you are motivated and you can do your research project on your own, meaning you are independent. You're willing and ready to learn, and you want to be shown the tools to complete your project which I'm going to do now. And um, you also, same like student, can be feel, uh, feeling a little bit overwhelmed uh, and a little bit anxious because, um, you know, um, like I said, research proce process has a lot of things for you to juggle with and balance and find an answer for your research questions. So uh, you are also probably aware of what the research project requires, what knowledge it requires and what skills skill set it requires as well and as you as you go with your research you probably want to uh, to publish your research results or present it um, somehow and this is how sage research methods platform can help you uh, we can help you to save time we can help you strengthen and diversify your skill set we can help you to enhance the quality of your research and increase publishing of your research as well i hope that's clear 
and of course our professors who are already very busy and they are doing a lot of responsibilities um not only teaching you guys but also doing their own research um like i said they are busy people so often they wish to have more time on their hand to teach research methods module they want to simplify research methods and make it an appealing and engaging topic because it's really hard to catch attention of millennials and gen z uh, people um, because they often may struggle to find resources that can help to engage those students who are really um hard to to grab you know it's hard to grab their attention we have to admit that part so um such research methods platform if you are a professor can help you to save time preparing your courses can improve engagement with research methods curriculum can enhance achievement of your learning outcomes and also through active learning opportunities which we provide on our platform and as a summary of what I've just said and what you have just covered, um, our content is aimed at wide range of expertise levels. It equips all users, which is students, um, professors, lecturers, researchers themselves, and even librarians with the skills to undertake effective and re robust research. We also cover all phases of research cycle. Like I said, so if you allow me, I will move to our platform and show you how it's looked like. So this is our home page here. And uh, just to show you how to find it, this is your library portal. Uh, if you do not know, you have uh, that. I strongly recommend you to visit your library platform and just click on A to Z databases and see what you have uh, there available to you. But what I'm going to do is search S because that's what Sage stands for. And this is the content that I promised available for you at the beginning of our session. So these are the resources that are available. You just need to click on search research methods and you will see that this icon here. It means that you are free to use it until 1st January 2024 because currently it's under trial with SDU. Okay. So uh, returning back to my home page, I can close this if you don't mind. Uh, returning back to our home page, you can see that um, this is how our platform looks like. I'm logged in under my name and under my organization here. But in your case, you will be logged in with IP that's registered in our system, which is your university. And uh, this is um, the ways how you can explore the content available to you on our platform. This includes books and references, cases, data set, podcasts, and videos. Uh, you also can learn more things about business, data visualization, doing research online, foundation, medicine, and health. And then if you scroll down, you can see the tools that are available to you, which I will be showing you uh, later in the video. There is also things from Sage, but I will not um, spend so much time on that. What I do want to show you is that if you are a student, you perhaps may want to find the information browsed by discipline. So like you, as you can see, this bar here with the logo and with your um, IP, there will be SDU logo here, uh, is appeared uh, with you, following you, no matter where you are at the platform. So you can browse by discipline. So let's say you are um, a researcher and you want to find um, things in public health discipline, you can straight jump to the discipline and see and see what we have, uh, what items we have categorized on the platform under this particular discipline. So you can choose um, any discipline that's relevant to you. That's usually used by our um, uh, dear students, they would like to straight away jump to um, the discipline that is related to their studies. And you also can see the content type, which is also a great uh, filter here, which can break down the results based on the content type that you chose, whether it's book and reference, whether it's cases, whether it's data sets or podcasts or videos. So basically, this whole thing is literally re replicating what you have on the home page. But in order for you not to return to your home page all the time, you can use this filter here that uh, is available like I said, no matter where you are on the platform. Okay, so um, 
I also mentioned uh, tools that we have uh, created for you, uh, for you guys, such as Methods Map, Project Planner, which stat tests and reading lists. But I will be uh, showing you how to use those tools uh, very shortly. So let's run a search now. I'm going to use a um, very simple search term such as focus groups. Uh, but before um, before I do so, let's talk a little bit about what this platform is literally designed to do. So um, let's say you are a researcher in business and management and you want to do your market research. And that's why you choose the focus groups as a method of your uh, research. Uh, so you're not coming here to find out about business and management topic and you are not coming here to find out about market research. You are here to, to find out, to answer the questions such as, what is focus groups? How do I organize one? How do I moderate one? How do I make sure that my focus groups are best as possible, as successful as possible? And if I don't choose focus group as my method, what are other alternatives um, that I have uh, on my hand? And these are basically the questions that you can find answers for on this platform. So you can see that I, I typed and the um, in the search bar, um, my uh, search term, which is focus groups um, for today. And you can see that uh, the platform itself is suggesting me a number of components, such as cases, videos, um, some more videos, data sets. Um, and I can jump, jump straight to that if I wanted to. But instead, I'm going to uh, I'm going to run a search now and see um, what we have when it comes to focus groups. Uh, because of screen sharing, my platform can be a bit slow, so bear with me for, for a while. As you can see, we have a lot of results here, and you might be thinking that, yeah, that's a lot of content. That's why we have created for you this filter on your left-hand side. And this filter you can use to uh, refine your content and uh, find the most relevant, uh, the, the, the items that will be most relevant for you. So um, I'm going to start with books now. And uh, this book um, sounds good to me if I were a researcher. I'm going to open it in a new tab. I'm also going to untick this all content type uh, part here. And I wanted to show you a data set as well. So you just need to click on data sets and apply filter, uh, which I'm going to do. And uh, you will have a data set uh, only as we go. Um, yeah, a bit slow. So you have a little description about what data sets are and uh, that data sets are taken from real research projects. Um, and you can see that what, what exactly we are trying to uh, do and help you to do by showing you all these data sets information. So um, I'm going to open one of these because this looks a little bit different rather than books itself. Um, I'm also going to show you um, videos because videos can be also, let's just collapse this and open videos as well. Okay, and I'm going to apply a filter and see what kind of videos I have for my for my project. So again, uh, there is a description for you um, about the videos and there is a hyperlinks that you can jump straight to if you want it. And uh, this is the video that I've highlighted, which I'm going to be showing you uh, very shortly about what this little hardship button here means. Um, and then uh, uh, other than that, the filter also can be used as a discipline ref to, to refine your discipline, which I'm not going to do because I'm running quite a general search right now. So if you wanted to, you could actually refine the discipline that's relevant to you. And also publication date. You may also be interested in more, you know, a recent uh, 
recent publications or opposite, you would like to go to some archived uh, things like um, from 2006 and onwards. And you also can use um, the filter up here. You can save your search if you want to. You can name your search and, you know, so that you don't have to run the same search again. You can do that as well. You can group results by work or section, which means basically the 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 book or data set or case or whatever you are looking for will be broken down to chapters and that would be um, much more content available but as you can see we are looking at the whole works not just chapters right uh, we also able to sort our content based on what our platforms offers, which is most relevant, alphabetical, most recent, most popular, last 12 months, and most popular all time. So this is something that you can play around with uh, if you wanted to. So let's take a look at the examples that I opened for you uh, in the different tabs, and we will begin with the books. So you will find some similarities on each of the components that I have opened uh, for you. And um, that's because we are trying to simplify and maximize your uh, you know, um, user uh, journey on our platform. We make it easy for you and we make it um, very accessible for everybody. So it doesn't need to be so difficult. You can just navigate it yourself and you don't need to even um, you know, ask anybody for help because this is really easy uh, to use platform. So um, as you can see, this is a, a little information about authors. We can see who um, published this particular book and what are they are. Uh, uh, what is the information about them? The publisher is us, of course, age publications, and then the series, and then you can see the publish pub publication year and online publication date, uh, meaning this one was published in print in 2007, and then it was replicated in online format in January 2011. We can also see discipline, anthropology, and the methods they used in this particular book. So it discovers focus groups, moderators, and group dynamics as well. There is a DOI, and also just to um, highlight the, the every component on uh, such research methods platform has its own unique link. So you can always take this link out and then share if you wanted to. Uh, there's also keywords which you can use when you search your term uh, or search your particular content that you need and these are the keywords that are being repeated in this particular book and uh, of course uh, you have a summary on what is this group is all about a really short one so that you can understand whether this book is good for you and for your project you can also see the content and these are the chapters that are uh, of, that this particular book is broke down to. And let's just jump straight to um, part uh, six, chapter six, and uh, conducting a focus group. So you, I'm just showing you how the chapters look like. Okay, so here I have some nice information about um, conducting a focus groups, um, physical arrangement of the group, uh, about how to interview and what style of interview I can use during my focus group, uh, discussion aids as well, observers and recordings and things like that. You can straight jump to the chapter if you don't want to read the whole book. Uh, you can also see and that all of this is quite um quite easy to use that yeah you know, like i said in my previous um discussion with you so uh other than that you have um not just on this particular page but also everywhere and each component of uh search research methods platform you have um option to get a link like i said every component has their own link you can cite you can share of course via social media you can indeed at the recipient's email address if you're a professor you might be interested in using this you can also um send yourself a copy if you wanted so you can embed you can change the uh size of the text if you wanted to so as you can see down there is a um search recommend search recommending you other content that may be interesting for you based on what you have chosen 
So this includes uh, books and maybe cases as well, if you wanted to, and journals and journal articles as well, if you want to jump straight to the journal articles after uh, reading this book. And uh, another component is data set. And um, data sets are pretty much, you will find the similarities, right? With the books as well. And you can see that they are quite similar in, in their way. Uh, and the difference is that and the data set button, you have your data exemplar, uh, meaning uh, real data to play with. And you can download this exemplar or you can read through and you can see um, what are the what was the conversation and how this focus group was done based on the data set on this particular data set so as you can see researcher is asking um the questions and there is a group discussion going on and these participants are answering the questions if you want like i said you can download this and this file and use it um, as you doing your research project this is for you to um see uh, how this particular data was, uh, how this particular case was conducted. Also important to uh, note that for in, in students' perspective and also in pedagogical perspective, we have this great material, which if you expand here, you can see, uh, let's say I'm the student and I'm doing my research project alone. And I'm not sure how to do that. I can always go to student guide and see the step by step guidance provided in this data set. So there is an introduction um, uh, that explains what is this data set about. This data set exemplar outlines the process of analyzing focus group, it uses transcript from research undertaken with 14 to 70 years old in Wales. And they're, they're go, going on with the um, pro process itself. They're talking about uh, politics with young people in Wales. And then uh, you can see what was discussed during this focus group. There's also uh, resources for you uh, professors. If you are here, you can also see a teaching guide and you can see a videos with a transcript down the video and you can see uh, how to teach using stage research methods data set. Basically, it's a um, uh, guidance from one of our authors um, where they will be explaining to you how to teach using data sets. So this might be something um, really interesting for you if you are a professor. So um, pretty much the same. You can have uh, your link, you can cite, you can share, you can also uh, download PDF if you wanted to. And uh, as you can see, there is this little cloud here uh that uh, directs me to methods map one of our tools and um you will see that platform is suggesting me to go to this uh to this tool which i'm going to do after showing you another component which is um video so as you can see um we have videos as well and this video are pretty much um a replication of um YouTube, I suppose. We have, um, of course, a pause button here. We can scroll um, towards the part where we need to. We can um, open this up to a bigger screen and uh, other settings that we can use. But if you are a professor or if you are a student and you think that this is quite a long video and you want to capture only key parts of this particular video, you can always create clip and, you know, kind of uh, use the seconds that you would like to minutes and seconds that you would like to highlight and just you know uh, made your own make your own clip and later let's say instead of 30 minutes it will be 10 minutes clip and then you can show it to a class because that's this way they better absorb the information i would say um as a visual visual visualization <laughs> yeah so this is how it works and this is how video component looks like. You also have a transcript that is um, going uh, with uh, 
the person speaking, meaning um, the the current transcript that you can also use. And then again, um, all these uh, features are available for you. You can download the video if you want to. You can download PDF, which will be this particular transcript. And then you can share, you can cite, you can get link, you can embed as well. So this video is broken down to chapters and you can see the video information as well as previously I was telling you, you, you will find uh, some similarities uh, related to books and data sets and every uh, component on the platform. So you can see that you have that information here as well, meaning what is the discipline, what methods they used and what is, what is the key word used in this particular uh, component. So um, as you can see, the platform suggesting me uh, to uh, go to methods map, which I am um, going to do uh, right now and um, show you a little bit about the tools that we have. So what is methods map? Methods map is one and only uh, tool from Sage Publishing that demonstrates how different methods are related and what is the relationship between these met methods and how it connects users to relevant content. So as my search was previously focus groups, that's why I have my focus groups in this green uh, circle here. And this is actually my main term right now. So what is a focus group? We have a little um, description here. So focus group is a form of group interview centered on a particular topic or activity and in which the interaction within the group is used to facilitate the elicitation of, of participant views. So you can see that this is my center term right now. And I also have a broader terms and a narrower terms. So if I choose broader terms, I can see that focus group is a part of qualitative data collection. And if I click on qualitative data collection, I see uh, narrower terms as well that are available to me. So focus group is what, what, what we were looking at earlier. And we also have indigenous research, internet research, narrative research, ethnography, documentary, case study, biographical action research, and etc. So this helps me to understand that focus group is was just one method of qualitative data collection, but also I have all these other methods that I can use if I don't want to use a focus group. So this is how narrower terms are related to qualitative data collection. I hope that's clear. So you can go ahead and search all the content of qualitative data collection if you wanted to. Uh, you can also uh, click on data collection and you can see that there is other terms of uh, data collection, there are met mixed methods, there are multiple methods, there are qualitative data, like what we are looking at earlier, there's quantitative data collection, there's sampling as well. And uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to go back to focus groups right now and see that um, there is also narrow terms to my focus group, such as group dynamics, marketing research, moderators, purposive sampling, and these are all part of focus groups. So if I'm going to click on group dynamics, let's say um, I did my focus group uh, before, and it was not um, very, go it was not so good, uh, the results of it, I mean, uh, because of maybe it was too difficult to manage. So I want to know the reason why, and let's say the reason was a group dynamics, uh, managing of group dynamics. And I can see that group dynamics is a term on itself. There is no narrow terms, meaning this is the most um, clear term possible that we have under group dynamics. And I can just go to uh, search all content on group dynamics and see information that is related to that particular method. So uh, you also, same thing like what I was showing you, you can play around with filters. There is only 66 results found related to method groups dynamic. You can scroll down through whole 66 and see what is it there platform suggesting you when it comes to uh, group dynamics. Perhaps you may want to watch a video. Perhaps you will want to go to books and reference itself. And um, 
another thing that I wanted to show you is, I hope that's clear about uh, methods map and how it works. So if you um, if you are not sure where to begin, you can always go back to uh, to the very beginning of uh, methods map, which is research methods, and you can start from the. Oh, sorry, this is not how you do that. You just need to go to the methods map through your uh, bar here. You can just click on methods map and start without uh, typing anything in particular, or you can just go through your homepage and click on methods map. And this is how the method map, methods map will be look, look like if you don't um, choose any particular method. So let's say you don't, you are not sure how uh, and where to start, what methods to use. You can always start with the beginning, which is um, the the very center of the of the of this particular map. So you can see that research methods are the systematic tools used to find, collect, analyze, and interpret information. And then there is, there is na narrower terms, um, such as uh, research progress, for example, designing your research, collecting your data, quality and data management, qualitative data analysis, and etc. And if I want to um, know how, to, how do I plan my research, you have a literature review here, a literature search here, research proposal, and you can walk your way through by using this map and play around with this map and see how are these methods related. You will never get lost in this map because you can always go back to your broader term and to your center term, term which you started from the very beginning. So, um, this is about methods map. I really encourage you to visit this um, this tool and see how it can help you with your research if you are doing any. And another uh, tool that I would like to show you is um, Project Planner, which is a step-by-step -step guidance to complete your research project, as the definition suggests. You can always, like I said, use this uh, bar here and choose your uh, tool, or you can go scroll down on the home page and choose Project Planner if you want to. And Project Planner basically is a tool that is really um, designed to guide you through your research project. So regardless what stage you are at, you can always come back to this tool, which will help you to understand what you can do next. So from the very beginning, where we're explaining you on philosophy of research, to all the way to writing up and dissemination. So I clicked uh, on philosophy of research just now, and we have this all these questions that we answer for you. So why do research? What's the difference between methodology and methods? What's the difference between qualitative research and quantitative research? What how do theory and methodological positions affect that the methods that I choose? And all these very basic and fundamental questions that you may need to answer available for you as well. So this is also a great tool for those who feel lost, who do not know where to seek help. Uh, this is really great tool for those who are stuck in some 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 stage of your research project. So if you are more advanced in your research and let's say you are analyzing your data and interpreting your data, this is one of the components that you can see and these are the questions that you can answer for so this stage will help you to explain different types of qualitative data analysis quantitative data analysis help you to interpret the results of your data analysis so these are the great um really saving time of everybody who is involved in research you can find the question that you need and you can really jump straight to the uh, to the answers here and uh, use this platform as a guidance for yourself. So like I say, Project Planner is really guiding you how to do your research from the very beginning, uh, regardless whether you are experienced person or not. Um, this tool is literally for everybody. Yeah. So 
I hope that's um, also clear with one of this uh, one of our tools that we have created. And another thing is which stat test. This is basically a set of very simple questions um, to see which statistical method is best best for the data that you have collected. So here are the questions that you, you need to answer for, uh, which includes uh, what is the purpose of your analysis? So let's say you are um, just any, okay? I'm just randomly gonna answer and see what the platform gives you. How many groups are you comparing? Two groups or more than two groups? So let's say I'm comparing two groups and then you can have help here. The number of groups you have depends on your study design. Are you comparing two groups? Are you comparing more than two groups? There is a hyperlink that will bring you to another uh, more detailed uh, results. Are you uh, are your data paired or unpaired? Let's say it was paired. And uh, another question, what measurements level is your outcome variable? Let's say ordinal, okay? I'm just randomly answering. And then there is a test that's suggested for me. So suggested test um, is this one. <laughs> Based on your answers to these questions, the test is the best suited for you is Will Soxon's signed rank test. So if you click on that test, you can see that what what information will come, come out. So there's a book uh, that is dedicated for this particular test and then you can see um, the content here you can see some examples you can see this table as well um, you can see a sample test if you wanted to or you can also check the reader's guide and entries from a to z so this is the the content that is also um, good for you to use if you are unsure and um, as you can see, um, based on what I have just searched, methods map here is suggesting me to take a look at this hypothesis. And uh, if you wanted to, you can straight jump to that and see and play around and see what comes out of that information as well. So uh, these are the broader terms of hypothesis, and this is just one of it. So this term is literally relates to hypothesis testing and multiple analysis of variance. So um, this is how our tools are basically related with one another. And another thing um, which would be the last for this platform search would be um, lists which you can create. And if I run my search again, just for a quick one and uh, choose any of the content that comes out first, I can see that there is little heart shaped button uh, suggested by the platform. So as you may have already guessed, that means it's your favorite content that you would like to perhaps save, which I am going to do. So you need to add to list and see whether any of your lists are already existing or should you want to create a new one, you can always uh, create a new one. So there's focus groups for SDU. You can write a little description here. You can make it private or you can make it public as well. So my list is just for me and I can save my list and, uh, you know, just uh, have it in my list later. So I also wanted to add this to uh, to another list, which is focus group SDU. And then maybe also we can add a video, let's say this one to focus groups as you so once you add your list you will have to go to your profile here you can see my name is mira and i can view my lists and see what i have saved for myself to read it later or to share with my fellow students or to share with my colleagues it's really up to you so as you can see, these are my lists that I have created. Um, not, not much, but still there is um, a few. And you can um, share the list with your uh, users, or with er every other user. Uh, you can also cite, you can edit, you can show list items. And this is the list that I have just saved for myself.
and uh, as you can see created by Mira uh, updated on November so these are the components that I have created so this is really great if you want to save the items um, you know um, to come back later while doing your research you can do this list unlimited how, uh, no matter how much uh, how many lists you want uh, you can make it either private or the public you can also browse public reading lists which means um, this list was this this particular list was created by other users and they made it public so you can go and see um, what uh, what have they saved for themselves so Michelle Whitney um, saved, saved uh, 29 resources and named it qualitative and then organizational leadership there's also somebody Jessica um, did her own list so this is how you can actually browse this list if you wanted to um oh you can make your own list and make it private uh, sorry and make it public and everybody else can view your list so with that in mind i'm going to jump to my slides back again because i am pretty much done about search research methods if you have any questions regarding the platform please don't forget about question and answer a button at the bottom of your screen and um, or you can wait for the question and answer session which will be right after we are done and I'm going to start with the courses that are also available for SDU users which call Sage Campus and basically um, Sage Campus is also another really um, interactive uh, platform that hosts around 37 uh, courses that covers a different um, length and different level whether you are a beginner or whether you are advanced learner so um, we really teach you to cover essential skills often not covered in class why because sometimes professors just don't, don't have time to explain each and one of you for example how to get published let's say and you if you wanted to you could always um, learn on your own or you can also um, have that course assigned to you by your lecturer or by your professor whatever it is every student um, research or and researcher needs to thrive in their academic study from critically assessing information to handling and publishing data and that's why we have created this really flexible safe paced and interactive suite um, that provides you all these courses that cover really tricky skills um, across all stages of your academic study whether you are undergrad or whether you are masters or even phd you can always find something that is relevant for you on Sage Campus and why actually Sage Campus is uh, being demonstrated today is because Sage Research Methods and Sage Campus really walk hand in hand together. They really complement each other. And this is um, one of the reasons why we always try to present both of the platforms together, because you will see how these two pro platforms, two unique content will help you in your own research or in your own um, information on handling data, for example. Um, like I said, every course is flexible, whether you want to study on your own, or whether you want to be assigned, or whether you as a professor want to assign these courses for somebody, is really up to you. You have unlimited access to this platform. So please feel free to use it. It's really interactive. Uh, it's my personal favorite <laughs> product uh including sage research methods and sage campus because um we have a lot of things there like flow charts like quizzes like checklists videos and things like that and uh i wish when i was studying i had this kind of resources available for me but unfortunately <laughs> i've graduated long ago and i can only use it as an employee at sage however like I said, we have a lot of features on Sage Campus, uh, which includes audio and video, different activities, games, interactivities, like I said, um, like maybe texts or uh, workbooks in Excel or spreadsheets that are ready for you already. Um, advice and reflection, which is author's tips and advice from personal experience. And also, like I said, downloadable Excel files like datasets, for example. 
So of course, our courses are not coming from some random people. They're always coming from experts in their field, which is, for example, Dr. Tom Chatfield. And Dr. Tom Chatfield is really a guru when it comes to critical thinking. We also have Andy Kirk, which is um, expert in data visualization. And each and every author that contributed um, their knowledge to Sage Campus are really, really experts, advanced people in their particular um, subject. And um, this is the pathway that we are having uh, hosting in our platform on Sage Campus, which includes navigating information and you go to um, your data courses, then you go to your research planning and then collect and manage your data analyze the data that you have just collected and managed and then are reporting findings and getting published of course at the end of all this thing you all, of course want to publish your results and you want to um, make sure that your results are best possible so like i say such research methods are really uh such research methods on campus are really two platforms that that are comp that that complement each other. And while um, research methods really hosts different um, library content, such as books and references and works and journal articles and videos, Campus is actually a course which can be self-paced, like I said, or can be also instructor-led if you wanted to. So while such research methods supports every step of the research uh, journey, uh, Sage Campus develops essential skills that you need for your academic journey. So um, such research methods is flexible and granular, which means user can find the exact resources that they need, while Sage Campus uh, have its unique learning design, uh, which is coming with learning outcomes as well. So you, you, you want to really um, take a look at both of this platform. So, um, such research methods is perfect for self-directed learning, bite-sized learning, and for faculty to embed item by item into existing curricula. And Sage Campus is perfect for self-directed course-based learning and for faculty also as well to supplement their curricula with ready-made courses that is already available for you on Sage Campus. So this is an example. And if you were a professor and you are teaching your, your students to uh, do text analysis with R programming. So you are really you really want to create a reading list first of helpful reference materials and share it with your users. And then you can uh, assign after you have done this reading list that I was showing you on Sage Research Methods. You can actually assign introduction to R course on Sage Campus as preparatory material to level up mixed ability students and to track their progress because there is another feature that will enable you to track the progress of the students. Then there is also Sage Research Methods which can help you to save time with ready-made edited data sets for students uh, to practice with. And then you can go to Sage Campus again to direct students to fundamentals of quantitative text analysis course to build further confidence. So this is how you actually can make them learn about text analysis with R. There is another case uh, as a PhD candidate is researching Twitter for, their, for his project. So this PhD candidate is starting with research question and planning his project then he identifies suitable methods using me the method map, the map that I was showing you previously. After that, he goes to search research methods and explore methodological challenges and best practices via case studies, which is another component available on search research methods. Then he goes to scope and design project using in-depth focused books and reference works. After that, he's learning how to gather tweets on, on data on collecting social media data course, which is available on Sage Campus. And then after that, he gained data management skills on the practical data management with our course. So this is his pathway on how to do research Twitter for that project. And with that in mind, I'm going to show you on how this excellent platform looks like and what are the um, what are the features. So 
dear students, I am now looking at the platform with your perspective, because as you can see, L here is a learner role. So if I was a learner, I can see that the, this is my courses that are in progress currently, which I have really no time to study, but I wish I would one day. So I have this introduction introduction to artificial intelligence. As you can see, I completed this 80%, which is great. And then I have this percentage um, uh, indication here. This is how much I have gone with, uh, with this programming course, for example. And then there is this progress bar that you can see. But bear in mind, if you have this course assigned to you by your professor, your professor can see this progress as well. And if it's a zero percent, then you will get into a trouble, you know. And then another thing is these courses that were assigned to me, but I didn't start it, unfortunately. So I'm also going to get into a trouble, right, for those who from those who assigned these courses to me. But I also can discover more courses if I don't want to learn about these courses. I want to discover more, which is critical reading and writing, for example, or critical critical thinking online course. And if I was an undergrad student, I would really like to uh, see the small short courses for beginners as well. You can also select by keyword and you can choose a category of the course, whether it's research skills, whether it's data science skills and etc. Then you can just choose the length of the course whether you want it to be short or long up, up, up to you and then um, course level as well whether you're a beginner intermediate or advanced so like i said earlier i would really like to see on critical reading and writing it's really really important especially uh, you know after you have graduated and went to work um, and pursue your career pathway. Uh, these are the essential skills that you need to cover, uh, such as uh, critical thinking, critical reading, and critical writing. So this is what are the learning outcomes of this particular course. And this course will help you to establish the value and purpose of critical reading and writing, prepare for, for and understand the jump in university expectations, recognize the difference between reading for pleasure and reading critically, because there is really a difference. Clarifying the purpose of your reading for a particular piece of work. Read and critically appraise academic literature and other forms of text and understand some conventions of academic writing and etc. So this is Dr. Eric. Uh, he is, let's read about him a bit. He is a head of school in the School of Education, Childhood, Youth and Sport at Open University. He has over 20 years of professional experience that involves teaching research scholarship or uh, teaching and learning and etc. So you can see that this was his background. He was joining this Open University and blah, blah, blah. So let's go down and see what we have here. And for you to actually start with the course you need to enroll to it and this is the course that broke down for different different chapters so you have to go through the chapters one by one i'm going to very, very briefly show you uh, on how this um, modules look like and um, as you can see there is an introduction uh, what how and why then you will have to read up on this one and then um, they will tell you what you will be able to do then there's another parts that this module broke down to and uh, let's see what so first of all you need to view this video this is dr eric himself he's telling you about um what you can expect after you learn this course. So you see this, there is uh, a tick here that I viewed it. Then you go down again and you read this part here, you watch this video as well, and then you answer the questions. That's the tricky part, because if you don't answer your question correctly, you will not be able to move forward with your, uh, with your, you know, with your course. So let's say I just, answer this okay i submit submit and eric says and then i viewed it so then platform actually allows me to go to the next step and then you have to read this eric says thing and then you can move to the next part 
So you see, this is really a very, very interactive course. It's really interesting, I think so. You can read about each component here. You can go down and then you see you have to do all this work because otherwise you will not be able to go to the next chapter. So you have to submit, then it's incorrect. You have to go down or go back and do it all over again. And I hope that's um, pretty much um, understandable on how these courses look like and what they actually help you do. And uh, another thing that I would like to clarify here is that every one of you who complete the course successfully will be able to get a certificate from Sage. I think it's a great motivation because I myself, I want to be acknowledged of the time I spent on this course, of the effort I've spent on this course, because some of these courses are 30 hours and above. And I really want to be acknowledged on the fact that I really, uh, you know, did it. And this is my certificate because I completed one of these courses. So I want to show you how the certificate, oh my God, how the certificate looks like. So this is the certificate that I've got and I'm very proud to share that I was certified in completing the course introduction to AI. So you, all of you will be able to get the certificates for free. You know, you can go ahead and use the platform and I really encourage you to do so. One more thing I would like to share, uh, as I have already showed you how this how this uh, courses look like, I also want to show you what kind of courses are there available at this platform. So as you can see, all the way you may you may want to select on let's say getting published, and if you are not sure on how to get published, you can complete all these courses, and then after completing all these courses, you should be able to get published um, with your paper. So first of all, it starts with article acceptance to promotion, then you're going to choose in your journal, then you, how, uh, then you go to how to write a journal article one, part two, then introduction to journal publishing, why you want to publish, peer review, feedback, decisions, publishing for impact, submission and final searches. Also, data science skills, which is a little bit longer. The courses can be up to 40 hours, as you can see. Some of them are 24 hours. For example, Python programming language, you can also learn on your own, uh, you know, without um, acquiring any course. Everything is available for you, like I said. There is also data literacy courses uh, as well. Um, I mean, isn't it brilliant? This is very, very unique as for me, I think so. And uh, another thing I would like to highlight here is I hope there is any professors out there in the 40 people that are joining to the session. So um, if you are a professor, you will have this course assigner role for yourself. And uh, not only you can learn the courses yourself, but you can also assign people to learn th these courses. And you can create a cohort if you want to. You can name your cohort, let's say um, this um, whatever classroom, uh, you know, I want to teach them on how to get published. And then you just select, 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 select. And then you assign and enroll learners on this, uh, to this particular cohort. And then you, um, since I already have a few cohorts available, I'm going to show you um, how the cohorts that are already being created look like. So I manage my cohorts. And as you can see, I have a few here. And uh, uh, sorry about that. I just wanted to delete the, the unnecessary ones. So you see, um, there is one course here, which is basic understanding research. Uh, there are four courses that I um, assign to people and there are five learners that are learning this course. So if you check uh, on this particular cohort, you can see that all my learners, let's imagine they are my students. Nobody started this course, yeah? 
Then there is one that was already um, uh, this guy, for example, here, he have completed most of the modules and Mira, which is me, completed the pre-course pre self-assessment. And then there is another course, plan your project, uh, some of them at 3.7, some of them at 1%, some of them at 0%. And you can really track the progress of your students so that may not be a good news for students but it may be really good good news for you as a professor and uh really nice the fact that you can literally create a cohort and ask your students to be prepared when you discuss a particular topic this is also pretty much very easy to use platform. You can actually um, go ahead and play around. Like I said, um, it's available on your platform and you can see any of these um, resources for you to use. So is there any questions about Sage Campus? And I hope I was clear enough and I hope you really um, understood what the point I'm trying to make here. Uh, and I hope after our session today, you will be able to use the platform as well. If um, there is no questions regarding Sage Campus, let me really briefly um, tell you um, what are the requirements of attending the online quiz. So people, uh, you are, are 38 minus my colleagues, you should be 35, 35 uh, users from SDU. Uh, you would need to attend a training webinar, which is um, going on right now from the beginning to the very end, meaning you have to stay with me until the end. And then you have to answer the questions on your library website before November 17th. Um, I have shared the link of the quiz with your librarian. Uh, her name is Anna, and Anna should be able to public uh, to to demonstrate the link on the library website. So please go ahead to your library website after this session, and then submit your answers before seventeenth of November, which is Friday, and we will announce the winners, which will be five winners in total, um, on seventeenth November itself, or maximum on November twentieth, uh, on Monday. All right, so you are able to win an attractive prize upon you answer these questions. Um, you have to answer the questions, otherwise you will not be counted as a uh, attendee of the quiz. So the first prize is the Swedish brand Tal and Sage Publishing co uh, Collaboration Backpack. Um, I also have one. Is, it's really cool and comfortable. You can you have your laptop compartment and all that. Uh, that would be the first prize. The second and third prizes are Techfolio, which is the laptop organizer. Uh, it's also a really useful thing for you to carry with you. And another two small but still uh, good prizes is uh, Sage Bunnies. It's a soft toy with our label on it. So I hope that's clear. Um, do you have any questions? Let me check the question and answer. No questions so far. Uh, we will wait for, for a couple of minutes for the questions. And if you don't have any, we can end this session for today. Thanks a lot. Thank you too, Saule. Где можно найти ссылку на квиз? Ссылку на квиз можно найти на портале библиотеки SDU. How we can how can we start using the platforms? Uh, Abbas, okay, I will share with you one more time. All right. Okay, please uh, follow me. So, uh, first of all, uh, oh my God, wait. I accidentally stopped sharing. Uh, let me do that one more time. I will show you how to find our resources on your library. Share screen. Sharing screen. Okay, please let me know if you can see my screen. So here's your 
university website, all right? And you go to students. Oh, it's loading. Then you will have library portal, library SDU. Uh, and then there should be A to Z database. Here it is. You go to A to Z databases, you go under S and you will find Sage Campus, Sage Journals, Sage Knowledge and Sage Research Methods platform. So you can go straight away to the resource and find it available for each and everyone in SDU. I hope that's clear. Okay, any more questions? Thank you for webinar, it was quite informative. Thank you very much, Aida. Um, our AI tools look like ChatGPT integrated into the materials provided by Sage Publications for Sage, uh, for Sage researchers. Uh, Kihan, can you please help me to answer um, just the Rin and Malika as well. Thank you so much for the informative. Thank you, Anna. Спасибо вам большое. И вам спасибо. А, кому еще не ответили, сейчас вам ответят. Uh, could you show us how to access the quiz on the library website? Um, Anna, I need your help here. Can you please, uh, I just allowed you to talk. Can you please explain the users where can they find the quiz link? Uh, good evening, mm -hmm. Hi everyone. Uh, Да, на сайте библиотеки мы выложим все ссылки, будет приведено видео сегодняшней информационной сессии, и также ссылка на опрос, обратная связь от слушателей сегодняшних, и ссылка на сам онлайн квиз с подробной инструкцией. Спасибо большое. Благодарю, I hope um, you found the answer for your questions. Анна, можете повторить еще раз, прослушала. Да, конечно, вся информация будет выложена на сайте библиотеки, и если нужно будет, мы сделаем рассылку краткую, выложим инструкцию, как все будет, приложим ссылку на саму запись сегодняшней сессии, ссылка на опросы, ссылка на онлайн-квиз. Спасибо большое. То есть, получается, после нашей э, сессии вся информация будет на э, веб-сайте библиотеки, и плюс еще она говорит, что она разошлет, э, сделает рассылку. Окей, спасибо. И вам спасибо. Окей. Жас Даурен, вам ответили только что. Так, есть ли у вас еще вопросы? Если нет. 
Можем. Можете писать на русском, если хотите. Подождем еще пару минут вопросы. Okay, if there is no more questions, uh, thank you very much for joining our session today. It was my pleasure and always would be my pleasure to serve SDU users. Uh, please feel free to uh, take an advantage of the trial that you currently have available for each and every one of you on your library website and not only Sage resources, but all the resources that your library provides to you. And um, again, I'm very happy to assist you further should you need um, my help. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to uh, contact me or uh, your library, and um, we will always find a way to assist you with any request you might have. Uh, please, um, like I said, uh, use uh, courses, use our research methods, uh, especially undergraduate students, because eventually, you will need to do your research project and you will need the resources um, to help you with that. Um, so thank you one more time and thanks everyone for joining our session today. We can end our webinar now and you can go ahead and answer the quiz questions uh, and wait for the announcement to get the attractive price from Sage. Uh, by the way, uh, the prizes have already arrived to your library. So once the winners are announced, please uh, feel free to approach to any of the library staff and they will be sharing with you your price. So thank you. Спасибо большое всем. Всем хорошего, приятного дня и хороших выходных. Have a great weekend ahead, everybody. Thank you. Bye.